Hello everyone, and welcome to the start of a new series of videos where I talk about some trivia on the Japanese culture or language and some nuances that were lost in the translation of the Japanese audio to the English subtitles of an anime. In this case, for the 2023 anime adaptation of the novel of the same name, Hikari no O, written by Hinata Rieko. Let's start with the Japanese title, Hikari no O and the official English one being the Fire Hunter. In the original one, there's also the word O to mean a king, or it could also be interpreted as a master at something. So a more literal translation would be something like the King of the Fire Hunters. Another interesting part is that the pronunciation of the word for hunting, Kari, when it's following what is hunt, it will usually change it to Gali, like with words as shishigali, hunting of an animal such as a deer, or majogali, which hunt. Something like this would have probably be higali, but by having that pronunciation, it makes it like the word for light, hikari, and adds a double meaning to the title as the king of light, and the people that are fire hunters to be a figurative light in the world. It seems so far to fit a lot with the story and the relation between fire and light. This was also mentioned directly in the episode, but every character's name contains something related to fire or a shade of the color red. When looking at them written, even if you don't know anything about the Japanese written language, you can see a lot of them having the red color of fire in them. Toko is written with lamp and child. Akali is with an outdated kanji for lamp. Lin is the element phosphorus, which is something used in the making of fire matches. Enji is smoke and two. Sakuroku, explosion and six. Koshi, twinkle and four. Hinako, the little sister, is the first one that doesn't have fire, but something related to the color red. The first one in our name is an outdated kanji for the color scarlet, and the second one is name, and the third one, child. The name written on the tombstone is Maho, True, and Fire. The family name Okibi on the letter is Kindling Fire and Fire, and also Okibi is the word for glowing ember. The given name Yoshichi is oil. 107. The name that Toko says at the beginning of the episode in front of a little shrine is Walashi, and it's the pronunciation in a Toku dialect of child. And the name of the dog was only written in hiragana, but it could be coming from the word kanata, which means beyond in the sense of in the distance. The curved looking green bean that we see multiple times in the episode is something called a magatama, literally curve ball. This is something that goes back really far in time to prehistoric Japan toward the end of the Jomon period, and some people think that it might have been brought over from Korea. In the beginning, around 1000 BC, it was mostly a decorative jewelry, but over time it became more associated as a religious subject. It is often viewed as a talisman to ward off evils and bring better fortune. For what's written on it, it's using the kanji for usual, flower, compare, and life or fate. And I went and looked at the novel to make sure how it was read in its Tokohana Hime, and is said in the narration to be the name of an unknown princess god. For those that were wondering, in this episode there was some kanji written in the background of the scene with the vehicle. Those were the numbers 1 to 10, written with their more formal kanji version, that are usually used in important documents to not be easily altered. This set of kanji compared to the usual ones. Here, the one on the left is Migi, right, and the one on the right is Hidari, left. The next part is going to be smaller nuances in the translation for those interested. For the dog was Inumeshi, the meal of a dog. 
truck was Kuruma, which is normally translated to car, but can be viewed more generally as a vehicle. You really are cursed was using Yakubyogami, a derogatory term that has a more literal sense of a god of pestilence, of someone who spread infectious diseases, resulting in the death of people around it. Muku paper was from Muku and was also seen later in the episode to be a word for innocence or pure. Sacred offering was from Kenjo Mono, high quality offering. And this was also an historical term used in the Edo period to talk about a gift offered to the shogun or a daimyo. In the flashback explaining that the parents of Toko died, the neighbor's husband was Lin no Chichioya, Rin's father. And who is Yoshichi was just the name, so it's not explicitly clear if he knows him or not. That's all for this episode, and you know what to do. Like this video to let me know if you want me to continue this series, comment about what other series you would like me to cover, and of course subscribe if you want to have more chance seeing when I upload more stuff. Anyway, it's all I have for this episode, and I'll see you next week.